In the year Y2K, Mr. Beaker's 10th grade chemistry class concocted some glowing green stuff. It was stored next to a box, altering its molecular structure. Later, the school was demolished, and it was replaced by a mall. The box remained undiscovered until now. The Love Lost Box of Molecularly Altered Educational Film Strips. Beep. Focus. When you hear the beep, advance the film strip. Loving You, For Better or Worse, Part 2, How to Keep It Up, brought to you by Uneven Distribution, and the Huge Morris Supporters. Remember Part 1? I'm scared. What's that voice? How did we get here? Four strangers who are all curious about love. What did they learn? I'm hungry. We're going to die. They learned about... Magnetism, true love, and the delicious buffet of love. Does this sound familiar? Kiss her! Kiss her! One thing you must always remember. What about making a portal of our very own? The portal was my idea. All love builds for future happiness. Having attained love, the question becomes, how can you keep it up? It's crazy, but it just might work. Let's heed the words of Stanislaus. There's no such thing as Santa Claus. Who said, love weakens as it grows older, while friendship strengthens with the years. All we need is to study and adjust your actions and thoughts to your lover, so to blend perfectly. For instance, She's right, and then we can rearrange you the- You should see to it that you have common interests. Look what I found. Where did that come from? See the big things. Look what I found! Speaking of which, one of the most annoying things that can disrupt a love affair is personal cleanliness. Naturally, in choosing a mate, it is imperative that he or she be healthy. Ailing mates are a menace to any love affair. Understand your lover. Balance the good with the bad. You certainly don't have to be Bo Brummel to do this. Another prerequisite that makes for a continuation of love is the all-important loyalty. We should split into sub-teams. So often, we are tempted to flirt with the first athlete who comes along. Julius, you're with me. Just an innocent flirtation. Oh good, I was going to suggest that too. Are you sure? Definitely. Well, what about us on the couch? What couch? By this, I don't mean to say that, like the ostrich, you should sink your head in the sand and hide yourself from realities. What do we do? You and Tad have the most important job of all. Hide nothing from your lover. Hiding the portal from the voice. Hold no secrets from your lover. You've got to form a human shield. Secrets are horrible things. Hidden, they fester and gnaw yeah, like canker worms yeah, until they become unbearable. <clears throat> are you almost finished? The worst thing you could do to a love is to lie. Unless it's... Oh no, we're going to have to start all over. The little white lie. People are funny. <laughs> they like to be praised even if the thing they are praised for is inconsequential. So praise him or her, even if he's not really good at tools. Let him know he is. I bet you could build portal thingy better. Tell her that it certainly is the best fudge you ever tasted. Your fudge is the best fudge I've ever tasted. But be careful who you praise. Margo, you're a genius. This leads into a discussion of that bugaboo of lovers, that awful green-eyed monster of a bugaboo. Jealousy. If you are a woman and your lover seemingly has cast his eyes in the other direction, what do you do? Just realize that there are thousands of other women more beautiful than you. But also realize that he, your lover, had found you attractive enough to fall in love with you. If the other woman is gorgeously shaped, but has dishwater hair, then just say to yourself, Huh, but did you see her hair? Huh, 
Do you see her hair? Remember what he said when he smelt your hair. Your hair smells like peaches. If you are a man, don't create suspicion of lost love in yourself. <laughs> Julius, you are so funny. When you see Elsie talking animatedly to another man, Bo Brimmel perhaps. And strong. Use your jealousy for self-improvement, but keep your jealousy to yourself. You're a dead man, Bo Brimmel. Now that we've created a loving, balanced relationship, we did it, Julius. Good job, Margot. You will be able to understand what you will need to make yourself happy. The final step is to recognize your faults as such and your virtues. Your fudge is the best fudge I've ever tasted. Yeah, thanks. One plus one equals three. Everyone, get into places. You may ask, what does that have to do with love? I love you, Julius. I love you, Kitty. The trouble with lovers is that they cannot seem to realize that others exist in the world besides themselves. I love you, Margo. I love you, Julius. What did you say? Let's get out of this place. No, that's not what you said. The only way to assure them of this permanent life of love is to build for the future. Everyone get with your partner. I mean, brace yourself. If you can honestly say yes to your mate for years to come, then you will have builded yourself a home that will be your castle. We're out of here, like chowder. You will have, as the poet has written, the smallest place in the world, it seems, yet full of hope and full of dreams, as any place more proudly blessed. For two, this tower, home is best. Damn it. For anyone out there, if you have enjoyed this series, Love and You, For Better or For Worse, please join me for other enjoyable series, such as Self Love and You. What the fuck? And Tom, Dick, and Harry. Where am I? The orgy of the Forbidden Tower. This can't be good. End of part two. Thank you.